Hello everybody, uh, my name is Joe Sullivan and today I'm going to take you through a denial of service attack and prevention uh, from the standpoint of running an IIS server on a PC and protecting that IIS server with the CBAC firewall provisioned on a Cisco router. So for those of you unfamiliar with what CBAC is, it's called the Context Based Access Control. And it's context-based because it's truly a stateful firewall. A stateful firewall can look at session flags and return responses and match that with the uh, initial request going out. Uh, the benefit for using a CBAC over other stateful firewalls, maybe a reflexive ACL, uh, is that it can, in addition to looking at TCP control flag headers like sync, fin, acknowledgement, and reset flags, what it can also do is it can also look at UDP, ICMP messages and set uh, not the flags in those because the overhead is relatively light. Uh, we don't have the control flag settings like we do in TCP. However, what it's going to do, it's going to have some default values or timers associated with those sessions. Um, and I can adjust those timers much like a tuning uh, amp. Let's say if you're in music or something, you want to adjust your amp. You can basically turn the dials down to adjust it towards your web server and how to protect your own web server. Uh, basically, I'm running an IIS web server at 172.29.01. I'm going to attack that web server using a denial of service attack uh, launched from Backtrack, either Siege or Slow Loris, uh, one of those two DNS uh, denial of service uh, attack devices. Um, I'm not showing you how to attack device on the internet. Uh, obviously, with doing it this way, you're going to get caught. <laughs> so this is for educational purposes, and I'm design I'm trying to design this video to show you how to protect your server. Uh, so first off, I'm going to run Backtrack and I'm going to run Wireshark in the background so you can see what's going on with the server. Uh, I have a CBAC firewall uh, provisioned on my device, and it's provisioned on this router and the router is called CBAC and I'm going to provision that firewall in the FA00 inbound interface and what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you show IP inspects um, all and I'm going to show you my timers and thresholds so I provision these timers one minute timers and thresholds uh, to block a particular connection volume and this is for a mid-sized corporation I'm going to see if I can generate enough traffic um, so that uh, I can actually flag this I have a TCP sync wait time of 20 seconds. Basically what I'm going to do is that when I hit the high water thresholds, I'm going to need to sh start shedding those packets. Um, I provision my interface 00 to be the inbound inspection rule called DOS kill, and here are my timeout values for DOS kill. Okay. Uh, I also have an ACL applied on there, but I'm going to rely on the CBAC uh, to start shedding some of those sessions. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go and operate Siege on Backtrack. And this Siege uh, is, uh, I'm going to do a verbiose output for the attack target at 172.29.01. Those of you may know, that's an internal, privately, non runnable address to my web server. So I'm not doing this on the internet. Um, so I go there and I have the CBAC provision at a high watermark of an incredibly large amount of packets uh, going through the sync floods. And I'm going to go and initiate the attack. And you see in the background, oops, there it goes. So the attack's flooding. You see the T TCP sync floods uh, emanate from that device. CBAC is chilled because I haven't reached that high watermark threshold yet. I'm going to continue that attack until at some point you're going to start seeing uh, these packets shed. There it is. See right there, that's a function of the CBAC. See right about the time where I have the connection reset, peer sock, connection reset by peer. You saw go across the screen, I have the alerts on. I don't have the accounting function on because it just would inundate my device with too many accounting messages. I don't really want to see all that. Um, but I have the alerts on, and alerts are set by CBAC by default. Now, here's a lot of resets going on. So I'm, I'm trying to protect my web server from queuing up enough resources where it actually crashes a web server and it would be unavailable for everybody. Um, I can try going to that web server page. I did make an awesome website and here it is. <laughs> this is my website. Uh, welcome to Ask Me My Peaks. This is my official index page and it has a time. So I'm trying to design so I can have another user come in and get access to it. Here 
I am I can open up uh, another uh, tab duplicate tab is there a shortcut for that let's see here control K all right Ooh, maybe they didn't like that too much um, I have a lot of TCP sync re recessions going on um, I am running basically <laughs> I think I crashed something. Oh, don't open up 5,000 5, uh, web pages in addition to doing a DOS flood. Apparently, that's not good. Um, so I have a lot of, <laughs> lot of problems right now. Uh, how about a different web browser? Can I duplicate page? I don't know. Uh, I'm going to reload. All right, so my request going out, and I, I'm going to have a lot of them, but you see how many uh, socketers? I'm setting a higher watermark threshold on that device, or I've set it, and really I'm trying to design this so I can look at the rate amount. Show IP. This is IP inspect. I'm looking for interfaces configured for inspection one. Uh, session creations, drop thresholds. Packet statistics. Let's go here. Okay, so my inspection policy is working. I see that D DOS attack uh, closed by peer. I'm going to remove the inspection. I see that it says read error, uh, reset. I'm going to stop that. So I'm going to go configure terminal, interface fast Ethernet 00, IP inspects, what's it, DOS kill in inbound. I'm going to say no. I'm going to remove it to apply it to the interface. And look at now. Once I removed it, my attack is um, progressing as normal, and I'm starting to queue up the resources. Once I add that DOS kill inspection rule again, based on the timers and, and uh, shed count that I want, I can shed some of those uh, excessive sync flood requests. And basically, when they, I have a shorter timeout window, I can set that too, and it and times them out, and uh, can remove those. So good. Up arrow again. I'm gonna put it back on the interface, and right away, you see when I put it back in the interface, see how this says a read error connection reset. Um, this is again protect. It's putting the CBAC in front of the server to try to protect it uh, to ser uh, for resources. Uh, if you're gonna use the other uh, type of DOS attack, I'm gonna stop this, and you see I do have a number of failed transactions. That's what I want to see. If I didn't have the failed if I let it run through without CBAC, I'm going to not have really any failed transactions. So I'm going to remove it again. I could rerun it. And just for, let's say, 400 or 500 sync floods. And I'm estimating here. Um, it might refresh the whole page. So I'll give it like, uh, you know, 5, 10 seconds. I'm going to stop it. And right now I have 579 hits. Uh, I have zero failed. And so you saw the difference uh, between the two when I have the C, uh, CBAC deployed and when it's not deployed. Um, if you are a Solar Solaris fan, one thing about Solaris is that uh, when you provision this, uh, you should be provisioning uh, a test device first before you run this. And the test is testing the timeout value and let's see if I could pull up I took a screenshot because I know the pages are gonna scroll really fast here let's see you can't see that so here's here's the testing values and basically what it says is trying a 90 second delay and it worked trying to use 140 second delay and it worked that's for one web server. Um, 
this is another one. The 90 second uh, work, the 240 second work, but this is the test script. Uh, what you'll see as far as the test script goes. Boy, it's a pain. I'm just trying to show you a screenshot. This is the script uh, Solaris.pl DNS for the attack target port 80 test. And it comes back with the time delays that you should be using for the test. Okay, here's the one on the web server IIS I'm using. Same command, but here's my attacking my IIS server, port 80 test, and I ran it uh, for 90 second delay work. So I'm going to set that value at a target for 90 second. Um, here's Jeez. Here is Solaris running it running right now and sending packets through. And um, over time, what this is going to do is keep the sync uh, session open by randomly re-energizing that sync session uh, with some HTTP traffic. And it's a smart way for crashing web servers. It might be a little bit slower. It doesn't it doesn't have the technique of flooding a web server, but it has the technique of keeping sync uh, sessions open. So for something like this, you may want to uh, set your sync timeout values uh, shorter. So here's, you know, it depends on what it is, maybe 10 seconds. Um, I just saw my sync timeout value here. Sync weight, uh, TCP weight, fin weight, uh, 20 seconds. Fin weight time is 5 seconds, and you can modify that pretty much anything you want. So Solaris is working, 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 and it, and it's going to wait uh, or sleep for 90 seconds and continue the attack because in the meantime it's going to try to keep some of those uh, sessions open. And basically it's going to slowly erode the resources or sessions on that end device. Uh, I'm going to change this up a little bit and uh, I'm going to try to attack a web server run by Cisco that is, I should say, not by Cisco at all. Um, it's run by me but it's a web server running the router. And what I'm going to do is change the siege attack number to a 27. I'm going to show you the router interface here. Um, nope, how about I just make it change the address to 27. This is Cisco Configuration Express on a router. This is actually on a router it's running. But I, I can look at router diagnostics. All right, it's coming up with some amount of memory, um, but I can go between that and configure CLI relatively easy, and I could do like show processes, CPU sorted for like five seconds, and oops, and run the command, and it shows me my CPU processes on the router sorted by five second intervals, but you can see here I can interact with it. Um, one thing I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna start the siege attack and. You know, basically, um, this is limited to 16 max sessions, I think, by my policy I set up. And um, it's basically going to, you know, overwhelm this device rapidly. Uh, and I could test that by the website that I'm going to. So I'm going to run the siege for this. And I'm basically just hammering that device. So if I go to configure... See how I'm not getting any response on it? it basically, it's it's stuck. Um, and my CBAC would have to be provisioned so low to protect this device. Show IP inspect all. I don't have it applied on interface at all. Uh, eventually, it came up because I had an open session. Configure terminal, interface, fast ethernet 00, IP inspects, denial of service kill on the inbound direction. Um, and I'd have to set the value so low on this. I only allow for 16 sessions, but you see how long it took then for the response. Here's the here's the plug, and this is just running one on there. Uh, if I choose to run a different one, here's the TCP socket resets. I need these, and you see before I set the DOS kill. Do you see what was happening? It was just flooding, flooding, flooding. I said denial of service kill, and I have to select timeout values occurring now. All right. Connection reset by peer. Connection reset by peer. That's a good thing. Um, it's still overwhelming this. By, I didn't need to set my values a little bit lower. But because I'm protecting the device, um, I'm able to get somewhat of an access to it. 
I'm going to stop this and show that I have a lot of fail transactions and somewhat successful 170. And this one I'm going to change the address to uh, 27, which is my device. So Solaris, you see it building the sockets. I'm not going to build too many of them. Um, I could set this actually to 40, but Solaris... So this is in the cache. You see the values. They're not meaning anything yet because there's just three lines. Um, and look at this. Uh, it says, you know what? I have the alert. It's calming down. I have the session count. It set a CBAC indicator that some attack was occurring. Current one, one minute rate exceeded my threshold. Um, you can set different thresholds. I put on a notepad here uh, some variations of thresholds for maybe a mid-sized corporation a really small corporation and a router. Um, so your thresholds can vary. Remember, it's like a you could like a tuning amp. You can see here. I'm gonna go to dashboard and just see. I don't think it's gonna queue up too many resources because the maximum amount of HTTP sessions you can have open is only 16 uh, on a router. So I have this as my router right now. It's looking at the dashboard, but um, you said the sinks on there. We saw the error being generated. That's good. Um, I can do debug. This is a real-time thing. It's not really what you want to do. But um, actually, I'm going to open up the router because it gives me some... Let's see. That attack target that I'm going to right now is... Uh, oops. Sorry, Inner Explorer just told me it crashed 10 times over. All right. I'm going to go to the router I'm attacking. Let's see, C5. I'm remoting into it. And I'm going to do a show IP TCP. Alright, so there's a command for IP TCP. Uh, I forgot what it was. Uh, show IP TCP. Now, how about this? Show TCP. And let's do this way statistics. And I know it's in. I'm going to. Well, I can see statistics here. Include connections. Attack is progressing. My, my values are a little bit too high for the router. I didn't change them here. Um, uh, no connections. I have. Remember, I'm sending a sync flood here. I have no connections going on. I'm gonna have to stop the attack. This is too aggressive. For this little device, all right. Yeah, I'm attacking my. There we go. That's an explorer just having crashed on me. There it goes. Number use. Cisco class and
Here's one of the sessions from that, uh, saying that I'm going through Outbyte. So I only have one session, relatively close out really rapidly, the CBAC. And what I'm going to do is try the Solaris. All right, and I'm gonna look for HTB sessions and see if it's protecting. It's, looks like it's protecting. And I'm gonna go back to the CBAC and stop. So once I stopped it, look at this. So I stopped it and look at the amount of sessions. Uh, it, it just overwhelmed the whole device. Um, I'm going to put back on the context space axis control and then look at the sessions. It's going to kill them out as it goes through. Remember, these, these have a timeout value or whatever I set it to 20 seconds or something. It's going to have to wait, but you know, really none of those are legitimate. They're just leveraged through the um, slow loris device attack right now. So I could set it to timeout. And again, I'm just trying to protect the router, but it's sleeping for a little bit. We'll let those sessions time out. Let's do a uh, show IP inspect all. Sync weight is 20 seconds. Uh, TCP fin weight is 5 seconds. So I just stopped uh, the attack here. And I had, <coughs> had the attack still running. So I just stopped the attack. I'm going to run through the connection. It just went out right away. I'm going to start the attack. And I'm going to check to make sure that I have CBAC provision. Good. It's on. And these are the established sessions uh, that's monitoring as far as CBAC. Um, established sessions. So I'm going to look at this again. Uh, no established sessions. That's good. I'm going to start the attack. Okay, go to my CBAC, monitoring these sessions. Look at how many, I mean, they keep going. These are all session uh, address indicators. I'm going to go to the device and look at server connections. None. <clears throat> this is CBAC not on. This is CBAC on. Which would you rather have, right? So obviously CBAC protects your device, monitoring your session, closing out those sync requests rapidly if they're not responding. Whatever I set it mine to, and you can see within here the block times that I have audit uh, audit trail alert trail set on the session uh, keys, half open sessions, just a ton of them. I mean, you look at here. Here's my established ones. Here's my half open. Okay. So it's good. Uh, it's working the way we really want it to work. Um, and you can set the value as lower, I guess, if you're protecting a router or something. Just You just set the timer you know, pretty low. Uh, maximum or half open sessions. I don't, how many do I have here? Um, max incomplete. Um, let's see here. I'm going to actually do this. Show run. Include inspects. 300. So we're not even going to get close to that in the router. So I might set it down like 8 or something for this. Or a server maybe th uh, 50. These, This is my inspection clauses I basically have for this. So I'm checking out HTTP, HTTPS. This is for like a mid-sized company I'm trying to protect. Um, and it's doing a good job of protecting a router, actually. Uh, see if, if I look at the server connections, none. If I stop 
um, if I st stop CBAC, it's probably going to get tired of me doing this, but no DOS kill in, and I look at the sessions, all right, it's sleeping right now. See, it's sleeping. So it's going to sleep for 250 seconds. I'll try to pause it, and, and when it comes back on and resumes its attack, I'll show you what's going on with it. So once you'll see here on the thread when it stops sleeping. Oops. What that's about. You know, I'm not going to wait on how long that's going to be. That's what I'm going to do. Start the attack again. Go back to the window for the server. Look at the sessions. Look at that. Huge amounts. Go back to CBAC. Inspect. Start taking out some of those sessions. All right, these are going to have to time out because these were on before the um, inspect came on. So I'm not going to worry about those. Show IP inspect. Well, this is monitoring new sessions. These were, again, before the feature was activated. So they're going to have to wait till their 20 second timeout. All right, just pause it for a few seconds and look at that. I'll start the attack again. I have the feature enabled. Let's see. And you could do things like I, I see uh, show run, include IP and ins include inspect. And what I could do is change the audit trail to on. And there's the audit trail. You see, I, I said it was going to be a lot sessions initiated, initiator. This is the audit trail it can produce about, I see how it says stop HTTP session. It's in action. It's showing you what's going on. Uh, produce a lot of audit trails, but it shows you that this is an attack in progress. Um, this is CBAC again. It's quite remarkable. Uh, considering you know what it has to contend with here's that's the audit trail um, it stopped the attack that's why the audit trail stopped because it's waiting 250 seconds um, but in the meantime I have limited access because one of those sessions I might be able to break in and, and get through the web access um, you know here's here's the vice right now the attack is stopped I can go through between once the attack resumes, here it is again. I can see the attack has whoever did it resume their attack. I go to the dashboard. It might take a little bit of time. Oh, see, it? it protected me. I got through. I got to the router and the dash. Good. I'm able to zoom around because I have an HTTP session active. I set the through a handshake up. It's not killing that session. It's killing the ones that the sync response didn't uh, get back to. Here's the responder agents. Boom, boom, boom. Responder sent. Good. Um, and this is set to medium-sized corporation. My router is still handling it like a champ. Interfaces. This normally takes time with C uh, CCP without being attacked. It normally takes a, like 5 to 10 seconds. So with it being attacked, I could see it taking a little bit longer. Yeah. That's fine. I'm still under attack. So now the attack stopped. It shouldn't be able to refresh itself but you see here I do have some functionality just go with something I know it normally works well good so I hope you enjoyed um, this video tutorial uh, to set up Solaris it's a little bit of a process I'm using backtrack I'm going to stop the attack and I'm gonna go to let's see here Siege and 
generate an attack here. And here is siege. Here's my responder agent. Say, hey, no, no, no. I'm gonna stop some of these. I haven't hit my high watermark threshold, but I'm monitoring the auto trail right there. I hit my high watermark threshold. Look at that. Bam. <laughs> Connection reset. Uh, so it's it's protecting my device quite a bit. And it shows me who the source is of the attack what port they're sourcing from. Look at all that. I'm resetting the pure the reset flag to clear out those sessions. Good. I'm gonna stop the attack. And you'll have number of failed transactions, a lot. Alright. And I'm going to go to the interface remove the DOS kill, regenerate the same attack, and watch my device get hammered. Nothing stopping it now. Look at that. It keeps going and going and going and going and going and going. All right put myself in front of the device I need to protect by writing my inspection clause on the inbound. Hit the high water mark, start shutting. So I'm going to work in the background a little bit here. Um, the attack is ongoing so I need to have those time sessions time out. Normally you wouldn't initiate it like midstream, you do it before you roll out production environment. But you see here, starting to generate those alerts, starting to drop the packets. Um, so you could write books on the IP inspect clauses, but um, again, just as a recap, this can inspect UDP, ICMP, TCP, in addition to searching out flags and session management for two-way connection. It could set uh, absolute timeout values, protect your uh, server, you could set your high watermarks, your low watermarks, your audit trails, uh, indicating you know at what point you start monitoring, what point you stop monitoring, what point, point you start shedding, and what point you stop. Um, but you can customize this like a like a tuning amp or something if you're like playing a guitar, um, or I guess if you're Britney Spears, you can auto amp it. But uh, you could do it. You could customize it to your organization and your liking. And I have three examples of what you might want to do for like a mid-sized, small, and a very small router, um, as setting some of these inspection clauses. Well, I hope you enjoy the video. Um, I hope you don't use this for attacking any legitimate source. But uh, we're this is video is designed to uh, inform you how to protect your devices in a production network and in a DMZ or outbound zone. Um, last thing on the video, uh, we can use uh, the inspection clause to prohibit all incoming traffic from the internet and then allow only our internal traffic out be and basically what we're doing is the inspection is going to track the HTTP session and return response to that session. Uh, it's a better than a reflexive ACL because it doesn't use an absolute timeout. It can look at control flags. Um, and so it's a little bit better because people can't sneak flag uh, past some um, errant packets. And so the inspection clause is the one uh, I would rather use instead of reflexive ACL. Uh, again, I hope you enjoy the video uh, distributed denial service tag. For more information on this, uh, you or just a denial service tag. For more information, you can always check Cisco websites. Uh, there are books on how to set the IP inspect clause. Um, this is a real-time demonstration. Uh, you saw it in action. You saw it working. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, like my site, subscribe. Have a great day.